Hello everyone, this will be the first of my video series where I go through a bunch of interesting uh, mathematical topics that could be used for one's um, IB math internal assessment. So this is a brief intro on how my math IA consulting sessions look like. So let's begin. So to give a brief introduction of myself, um, I've been an IB tutor for eight years. I've supervised over 200 students, helping them with exam preparation, uh, personal statements, university, grad school admissions, as well as um, external essays, internal assessments, and other research papers. So a lot of people have been ask asking me uh, how my classes go or what kind of help do I give them. So I will uh, kind of pitch you a math IA idea and try to give you like a sneak peek into how my classes would go if you were to uh, get some math IA help from me. Okay. So uh, I've done the IB myself. I've also gone a seven in math HL. I know how tough it is. I know that uh, math IAs, physics IAs, they can be uh, quite a pain, right? So if you need help with math, physics, or econ, especially with internal assessments, uh, I'm here to help. Okay, uh, currently I'm researching uh, how to optimize like manufacturing systems with a focus on uh, reinforced learning. So uh, today's topic, which is optimization and linear programming, it's something that I've been studying for quite a while and I've taken a particular liking to it. Uh, some students in my past, they've generated uh, successful I topics from this um, branch of math. So I hope you enjoy this mini session and I hope you learn something new today that you didn't know before. So. I'm sure optimization isn't something that's entirely new to an IB student. In, in the calculus unit, I'm sure you've seen questions like this. Right? So a farmer has 100 meters of fencing wire and he wants to create the largest rectangular enclosed area. So what should he do? Right? So usually how we approach this problem is we formulate a mathematical model to represent the needs of the problem and the rules that we must follow. So if you say L is length and width is W, then the objective is to maximize area, the product of length and width, but we must make sure that the constraints are followed. So the, if the parameter is 100, then 2L plus 2W must equal 100. So in calculus, we might want to start off like this. If A is L times W, we might first convert this into a single variable function. So we might have area as a function of length. So you, you want to remove w from this equation. So how do you do that? Well, we could use substitution. This may as well be written as w equals 50 minus l. So area as a function of length would look something like this. l times 50 minus, w, uh, 50 minus l. Okay. And if you were to differentiate a area with respect to length l, we would get something like 50 minus 2L. And if we set dA over dL equals zero, so basically when the length is 25 meters, this is when area is either a maximum or a minimum. Okay. So when length is 25 meters, width is 25 meters, so area would be 625 squared meters, and this would actually be our maximum area. So we could further check this by using sign diagrams, right? Whether dA or dL is positive and negative. So I guess we have something like this. Right? Or we might use a second differentiation. Right? Uh, so this is like a very basic stuff. So I'm just going to move ahead. Okay. So in the IB, we have already dealt with optimization problems where we're trying to maximize or minimize the value of a single variable function. But now, one might ask as an extension, what happens when we have a similar constrained optimization case where we are dealing with multiple input variables at a time? So previously, we just had f as a function of x, right? Area as a function of length. There was only one input variable to consider. But what if we had multiple input variables? So what if we had f as a function of x and y? What if we had more than two variables, like x1, x2, x3? and all the way up to n variables. So all of these collectively adjust what the um, value of this function will be. Then how do we find the correct combination of all these variables that produce a maximum or minimum quantity for this overall function, right? So you might want to consider which solutions are feasible, right? So if you call these 
controllable inputs of a linear program, right? So if you call these uh, decision variables, what set of decision variables can make up a feasible solution that simultaneously satisfy any constraints given? Okay, and if we have a list of feasible solution sets, which of these is going to be the most optimal? And for now, we're going to limit our discussion of optimality to linear pro, uh, linear pro problems only. So we're not going to deal with crazy stuff like x squared y plus 2xy. We're not going to have um, any of these kind of functions. We're going to stay uh, short and simple, right? a1, x1 plus a2, x2 plus all the way until maybe... Uh, a n x n and maybe you could have a constant term so these are linear expressions or linear um, later on we'll call these like linear equalities linear inequalities so we're limiting ourselves to uh, expressions where the highest degree is one we're not going to deal with quadratics or such okay so uh, if you were to have a class with me we would dive into the uh, more complex and challenging topics but this is just an intro so let's just um, stay on track okay uh, so, how constraint optimization works. So, suppose that you're a CEO of a utensils company and your company manufactures forks and knives. So, for each fork produced and sold, you get 15 bucks. For each knife produced and sold, you get 10 bucks. Okay, and um, I guess the correct solution if you want to make money and become rich is to make as infinitely many forks and knives as possible. But if you've taken IB economics, you know, you would know that this is highly unlikely because there's a scarcity of resources. You must make a choice on what is the best uh, output. Okay, so there are a, a wide array of manufacturing problems, uh, economics problems, business problems, operations research problems that require the use of constrained optimization. There is a maximum quantity or some desirable quantity that we wish to maximize, but in fulfilling that, we must make sure we are uh, not breaking any ground rules. Such ground rules may look like this. A fork requires four hours of labor, knives require six hours of labor. So maybe it's a artisan utensil, right? There's a lot of input going in um, and let's say we have six people working 60 hours a week hope that's legal that means we have 360 hours of labor available so we can't make as uh, many forks and knives as we want we, don't, we must make sure that the overall labor hours used stays within this limit okay next uh, we could see that forks require three grams of copper while uh, knives require five grams of aluminum and a company currently has uh, stockpile of 180 grams of copper and 200 grams of aluminum so if you decide to call the number of forks made x1 number of forks and if you say x2 is the number of knives that we're going to make you may as well say that the total profit is going to be 15x1 plus 10x2. Likewise, you could say that out of uh, 360 hours, so out of the total available 360 hours, we don't want to use more than this. So if you make x1 forks and x2 knives, the total hours of labor would be 4x1 plus 6x2. And for each fork requiring three grams of copper, the total amount of resources used would be three X1. This should be less than the stockpile of 180 grams of copper. For each unit of knives, we require five grams of aluminum. This should be less than 200 grams. So we're trying to maximize this quantity subject to these constraints over here. Of course, uh, it's trivial to say that x1 and x2 must be non-negative because you can't really make negative quantities of knives and forks. So that's all summarized in this diagram right here. Uh, we have our objective function as well as our constraint equations right here. So notice that our constraints should be inequalities less than. That's why we shade the inner sides here. So this shaded feasible region is the combination of solutions that satisfy all three constraints at the same time. So notice that the x-axis is the number of forks we make and the y-axis is the number of knives we make. So any point in this feasible region 
is a combination of forks and knives that satisfy all of these constraints simultaneously. So out of these feasible points, our goal is now to find the maximum point. So uh, which point on here is going to return the highest value of profit? Okay. And extreme point theorem, which we will cover uh, in greater detail later on, says that a linear program has a optimal solution that should be one of the vertices or the extreme points. So in this case, our extreme point of the feasible region of this convex polygon is O, A, B, C, D. So we just need to, so we just need to look at all of these um, five points and evaluate the objective function value. And this tells us that B, uh, if you produce 60 forks and 20 knives, is our optimal point. So let's try solving this using Excel. So I recommend that people use Excel add-in uh, solver. So it's a add-in feature tool uh, that's great for solving optimization problems. And there's also Google OR tools, um, which is used for a wider array of different uh, linear programming and optimization problems. So if you're an IB student, I'm sure you've dealt with TI calculators, you've dealt with Excel, you've dealt with Logger Pro. Uh, in addition to these, I'm just um, recommending the solver feature, uh, which you can install separately. Uh, no money required, I think it's free. Uh, or we could also use other graphing tools like Desmos and whatnot, right? Or Graph uh, 3.0, 4.0. So. Uh, I think a good way to get high points on the IA is to uh, incorporate technology and visualize. So you gotta communicate to your grader what you're trying to do, the math behind the or the math behind your thinking. Okay, so uh, I'll cover in a later follow-up video how we can create the spreadsheet so that we just need to enter our potential uh, forks and knives into this yellow box that should automatically calculate a temporary solution of profit as well as the uh, tracking the resources used and making sure that it's below this much. So uh, depending on the yellow values here, the input values, the red values are going to automatically change. Um, and if we were to use the solver, we would put in a command saying, uh, we, want to we want to maximize the objective value in this cell by changing these two values. And all the while, making sure that cells D12 to D14, so notice that these three are D12 to D14, all of these are smaller than F12 to F14. And we're going to use um, the simplex method to solve for the optimal solution. So I'll cover this in greater detail in a later video. So. Uh, if you were to hit the solve button right here, we should get the following results. So same as before, the correct recommendation for the CEO is to produce 60 forks and 20 knives so that we can generate a profit of 1100 US dollars. Uh, such a plan requires the usage of 360 labor hours, 180 grams of copper, 100 grams of aluminum. So none of the constraints are violated because we're using these two resources to the max. If anything, we have 100 grams of leftover excess aluminum. So if you were the CEO, you might uh, maybe wonder, um, maybe next time we could buy less aluminum or uh, how could we make better use of this aluminum? Okay, so let's meet up again in a follow-up Excel uh, video. And we're looking at our Excel spreadsheet. So as I've said earlier, uh, these two yellow cells are the input variables. So our two decision variables, we're going to put in a random value here. And this would automatically give us a net profit. So notice that this cell is found by multiplying B5 with B6. So forks times the profit per unit, adding that to the number of knives times the profit per knife. So producing 60 forks and 20 knives gives us a profit of 1,100. If you were to change the number of forks to 50, that would lead to a slightly reduced profit because we now have 50 forks instead of 60, we're losing $150 of uh, potential profit. Now, if you look at the resources used, notice, uh, so pay attention to the cells here. This is the B5 times B12 plus C5 times C12. So that's basically multiplying these two input values to these requirements. So if you multiply 50 forks by four hours per fork and 20 knives times six hours per knife, that should give us 320 resources being used right now. 
And if you use a dollar sign here, the great thing is that we can just simply drag this cell and basically refer to these two cells for the next row. Uh, all the while, um, all these three cells are still referring to B5 and C5. So I'll explain that later if it, that's not clear now, but the point of using Excel is to automate these processes and uh, get a more faster uh, solution. So basically this current solution is feasible uh, because we're staying within our limits. We're using 320 hours of labor, 150 grams of copper, 100 grams of aluminum. This is well within the restrictions, but this may not be optimal because we can make more forks and knives. So as I've said earlier, we go to solver, we're going to maximize the value in this cell by changing these two cells right here from B5 to C5. Uh, subject to the constraints that these three cells are respectively less than or equal to these three cells. And we want to make sure that we don't get any non we don't get any negative variables. We can't have negative forks and knives. Um, there are different algorithms by which the Excel solver would uh, return these optimal solutions, uh, but I like the simplex method. Uh, let's use this one. And there we go. Uh, if you look at our solver solution, this automatically helps us uh, figure out that 60 forks, 20 knives is the optimal solution. Back to our slides. So to wrap it up here, um, what I've just done is I pitched you a potential topic for an internal assessment. And as of now, it's pretty simple. We didn't go into much detail yet, but if you were to have a class together, I would take you on a journey. <laughs> I'll give you some reading materials, give you some specific lessons you'll need to understand in order to further progress this idea. So I'll try to make a personally tailored topic for you that engages you and uh, scores high in the personal engagement department, as well as, um, something that's, uh, I guess, difficult enough to impress the examiners while also um, being somewhat understandable enough for you so that this can be your own complete work. So I know that's a lot of tick marks to hit, but uh, I have the experience, just gotta follow me. Uh, let's get that 20 out of 20 on that IA.